This is an SM Media production. Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of SM Media's Road to Cheltenham. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be here again, joined as always by Callum McClurkin. Callum, we're dead on into the national hunt season and we're seeing clues week by week. How impressed have you been and what's your been kind of thoughts of the past few weeks? Yeah, it's been good, starting to warm up now, isn't it? Um, all the big guns are coming out to play. Um, Shishkin in particular was very impressive. Yeah, for awesome. The chase and debut, it was 10 out of 10. I think that was probably visually the most spectacular performance of the week. Mm-hmm. A lot of racing to get through, so we'll, we'll get started straight away. And we'll start off with the recap. We'll look at all the horses that have been catching myself and Callum's eyes over the week. We'll start off on Wednesday at Warwick. The Glancing Queen won a two-mile five Mayor's Novice Hurdle. She was pretty comfortable. I thought she was pretty good. She's into 14 to 1 for the Mayor's Novices Hurdle at the festival. I thought she was pretty, I thought she jumped pretty well. I thought the carries in some bumper form as well. She's running two champion bumpers, but I think she was 12th last year in the, the bumper. So the fact that the 12th horse in the bumpers winning is showing that that looks a pretty good race for form. Yeah, she's quite experienced now. I think I think she's quite um, she's got a lot of background to her. Um, she's had her problems before physically. That's why she's probably a bit a year older than, than yeah. normal. But for a mayor's novice hurdle to have experience in your belt, particularly at Cheltenham, is, is certainly an advantage. I think she's better and better ground. I think I think avoiding soft is quite important to her. Um, does she have the class of progression? Maybe as some that Willie Mullins or some of the leading Irish stables have potentially a person yeah. they're not so sure. So I think she's short enough for Cheltenham purposes anyway. Mm-hmm, definitely. Another horse at Warwick, we'll touch on is Phoenix Way, won a two mile novices chase. He beat Stratagem by neck. Now, I've heard quotes of like 33 to 1 for the RSA. Like we, we assume she's going to go up and trap. Yeah, I, I think certainly go up and trip. And I, I think that's why he was the outside, outside of the three yeah. for his debut over two miles because I don't think people were expecting uh, to win over that trip. Uh, he was, he's an interesting horse. He was, he was, he was a notable gamble for the Bertolt final last year. Yeah. And he, did, he, he, did, he didn't quite make it. So he's, he's certainly of interest. Um, it's just where's he going to be pitched next? You'd assume it'd be up and trip somewhere down the line. Yeah. Definitely. We'll move on to Thursday in Thurlis. Presenting Percy. I got one right. Uh, oh, he's back. Yep. Yeah, beat Kenboy and Monolee. I would say both of them needed to run right enough, but I would say Presenting Percy jumped better than he's jumped in a long, long time. Good performance. Into 16 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Now, again, it's difficult to say like form wise, but I think you can take a lot of positives out of Presenting Percy. Yeah, it's another step forward, isn't it, in his uh, road to redemption. Um, the, the change of scenery seems to have certainly helped him. Um, I, th- I think Kenboy, Kenboy and Mona Lee didn't need the run, but there was money down for Kenboy. He was back yeah. in the 11-10 favourite in the end. The presenting person went, up, went off outside of the three, uh, t- to my amazement, because I thought, you know, race fit rival. He was the only race fit one there. It was quite quite gettable from a punting perspective on the day. Um, Savile's chase seems to be the plan. Yeah. Maybe Clash with Delta work again. Um, and a few other interests and in, potentially in Lindo champ might come over. So we'll probably find out even more of him. But yeah, yeah certainly encouraging if you he's, he's getting towards that RSA novice form now and if he keeps continuing, keeps developing, then he might he might just keep into the gold cup picture even more. Yeah, we'll touch on Kenboy quickly as well. I just think Kenboy, obviously, Ruby Walsh's last ever winner and he beat Album Photo in that race, but do you not just feel that he's jumping just always lets him down? Uh, it tends to, yeah. Uh, um, it's a bit disappointing. I thought he was fantastic. He, he can be fantastic, but particularly from the front, I don't yeah. understand why he's not being aggressively ridden like he was by Walsh at the likes of Aintree. And, and just in the last time yeah. he beat Arben Foto, I'd, I'd just like to see him go forward, bowl out a little bit, but he probably needed it. When Willie Mullins has a tendency to have his like, big season chasers, really do need their first run, even at Christmas, they still need it. 
We'll move on to Friday and ask it with Shantry House. Uh, one is beginner's chase over two miles. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it jumped decent. I wouldn't say it was brilliant, but it was decent. But we can tell the class is all there. Third in the Supreme. Pat Dory was, was cruising before he fell. Like, do you think Shantry House had a one, Carl? Yeah, I'm not too sure that he would have won. Uh, I, th- I thought he was quite good, but picked though he fell three out, he, he was he was going better. He was travelling better than Chantry House, and Chantry House was niggled along the back a little bit. Uh, he was probably out of his comfort zone a little bit at the speed that they were going. So, yeah, step up and trip for him and the Marfs is an obvious target for me. Yeah, 10 to 1 for the Marfs, so second favourite to Envoy Allen. So, we'll need to improve to get to that level of form, but still, mm-hmm. still pretty good. Can't ask for a a better start than a winning chasing debut. On to Gowran Park, a few to mention on Friday. Yumdor won a juvenile hurdle. I wouldn't say Yumdor's the best jumper I've seen on that division, but he'll need to improve. But he looks a nice prospect into 16 to 1, seeing a joint second favourite for the triumph. So, will need to improve, but I thought he was all right. I thought he was pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, he's jumping to get better as the race went on as well. I thought um, heavy ground as well for a juvenile will always be tough and he could cope with that quite well. Uh, yeah, he, he can progress a lot, and I think the time on the day was quite favourable in comparison to the to, to the most senior races running that trip. So yeah, he certainly, certainly wanted to watch. Definitely, we will move on to one of the big races for novices over the weekend was Fernie Hollow, the bumper winner, get back to win and get a one over cha- over hurdles, beat my, one of my favourite horses, Bob Ollinger, by a, by a length. Fernie Hollow was good, jumped well. I thought needs. I think two miles is his trap. I think he's going to be a supreme horse. Whereas Bob Ollinger, I would take nothing but positives from him as well. He will need a step up and trip, though. I would say I'm very happy with my pick, my Bob Ollinger pick, though. I think he was good and fairly hollow. Was, couldn't give us for a better start as well. Yeah, both of them jumped well. Uh, they beat the rest by 45 lengths, yeah. which, uh, which says a lot. They didn't go fast. They kind of both found their feet. I think fairly hollow. He really needs something to aim at, and having Bob Ollinger there, I think, helped him. Yeah, I think he likes to know. come quite late and have a strong pace to aim at. So, yeah, even though he could potentially get the Ballamore trip down the line, I think I think a fast run, supreme, maybe on soft ground. They normally water it the first day. So, yeah. a, lot, a lot seems to fall in his favour, I think, there. Uh, Bob Ollinger was really, really encouraging, I thought. He'd be better seen up and trip but after a long layoff you're always kind of thinking you know, is, is he as good as I first thought he was it's a long time ago start kind of doubting yourself is he, was he, is he that good did he do that much can he progress like he showed that he certainly did so yeah, yeah a lot of encouragement to take by him yeah nothing but positive to take from the two horses uh, a horse I like and I think it's Energuimea Guimena I think you pronounce it he's into 16 to 1 for the RSA it was very, very good one of one a beginner's chase over. I think it was two mile five. Jumps a little bit to his right, which would be a slight concern for me, particularly around Cheltenham, but looks to have a good engine. Yeah, I think others in the market that'd be slightly disappointed, so he might be a bit flat, but I think he just jumped them into submission a little bit. Um yeah, again, it's one of those Willie Mullins French imports that we don't know a lot of. Yeah. Don't know a lot about that seem to spring into life and he looks capable of taking high rank in the novice division. So yeah, he looks good. Mm-hmm, definitely. We'll move on to Saturday and ask it. First horse to mention, Imperial Aura. Into 13-2 to for the Ryanair. Favourite. Won very well. Couldn't ask for a bet- better jump in performance. Beat actually feet a horse I liked last year by five and a half lengths. Do you think he's justified to be the Ryanair favourite? Yeah, no. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm really surprised that he's 13-2. I mean, you've got the class of men all the whole... Sam Crow, they'll probably all take each other on the John Durkin. Yeah. The winner of that will probably leapfrog him into favouritism for the Ryanair. You'd have to think because they're more they've got proven class over grade one. It's simple as that. But Imperial Aura, you can't knock him. I mean, he's, he's certainly a player now. That, that, that was a question. It was another step, stepping stone into whether he could really make it a grade of company. And his jumping is his main asset. And then, oh, it's a great jumper, yeah. You know, it's your feet. You question the form a little bit. Actually, feet kind of he hit more fences than he than he didn't, and he still got within five and a half, six lengths. Real steel was still pitching there until he made a big mistake at the third last. Yeah, and Peel Aura had a massive jump that kind of ended the race for him. So you can question the form a little bit in behind, but there's certainly no doubt that this Kim Bailey seven-year-old is, is progressing. And then 
and he's versatile as well. He doesn't need to pull out from the front. You know, he took a lead from Black Cotton, who fell uh, for the first half of the race. Uh, you can pick it off. He reminds me of like if he's going to poach your eye in here, I think he's going to do it in a kind of throw down fashion. Of yeah, me too. Po- poaching it from the front, maybe stalking Min. You know, Min finished quite tired last year in the race. Mm-hmm. And St. Cal would also get really close to him. I think if Imperial Aura can maybe apply a bit of pressure from the front on the likes of Min and Alaho, ask the question. He could, he, he can see him running well, but at a price right now, 13 to 2. It wouldn't interest me at the minute. I mean, I think it'd be more like that on the day. Yeah. And uh, you'd probably back him then. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to ask a hurdle. We thought we were going to see Goshen, but it got ruled out again. Song for someone, no picked up the pieces in one. Beat Call Me Lord and Lorena. We'll talk about Lorena in a second, but Song for Someone was pretty good, but again, we'll need it to be very, very soft if he's going to contend in any sort of champion hurdle. I don't think he's a champion hurdle class horse, but well, took advantage of the really, really heavy ground. Yeah, I gave him a nice mention last week when all the big guns were there, and he was still rated. His ratings were they were all a part of them. He was one pound inferior to Lorena and Call Me Lord in the end yeah. of the day. He's two years younger. But he, he's the one that's got the profile. He, he was the one that's got the hardy profile that will probably be trained for it, my Tom Simons. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was good. It was from the front. Nico de Boinville gave him a very good front running ride. Yeah. He knew exactly what he had in behind. You want Lorena under pressure to prove her welfare more than anything, which she didn't do. She bled again, which was unfortunate. And Call Me Lord d- doesn't doesn't tend to find when asked no. too much. No. It's more of a kind of on the bridle horse, really. Um, so song for someone broke both of them. Uh, the international hurdle will probably tell more about his Cheltenham credentials as a champion hurdle. But yeah, the, the mud will have to be flying for him to to take a hand, you'd imagine. But it was a, it was a good performance. And again, yeah. he's a young five-year-old on the up. Mm-hmm. We'll just quick, quickly mention Lorena, obviously, bust a blood vessel again. So Paul Nichols who's recently got the horse, has just decided to, to retire her. It's a, it's a shame. We thought we thought maybe two or three years ago she was going to be a very, very exciting horse, but obviously fitness has been a big you know, reason that this decision has been made. But I would say, if, what, would she, what could she have been if, we'd, if she'd been fit? I think she, she was favourite. She was very early favourite for the Arco last year, so she definitely the potential was there. Yeah, a lot of people rated her potential. Uh, she was champion huddle fourth. Yeah. Uh, and she was quite well back that day as well. Um, it's, it's the mayor's, mayor's novice huddle, the mayor's huddle. She didn't quite make that transition to champion huddle status like, like Annie Powell did. Yeah. Some other mayors at Willie Mullins had, Quay Vega, not, not quite at that level. But in terms of in terms of breeding, she's very valuable and retiring her is, is definitely the right decision. Definitely. We'll move on to the first grade one of the British season. The ground came up heavy and Bristol Demai took advantage of it and won. Uh, I don't even know where to start here. Like, Clan de Zobo, I think it was a good prep run for the King George. Loss in translation was very disappointing. Bristol Demai took advantage of the heavy ground. The Gold Cup winner doesn't come for this race, does he? No. I mean, amazingly, it was another one I got right on the day. Yeah. Uh, Bristol winning, um, that is his Gold Cup now, nowadays, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Get a national yeah. for him rather than a Gold Cup, I think. And they'll be hoping it rains. Um, he was good. He just, again, he just grinded it out. And the, tactically, it fell in his favour. The ground was too heavy for loss in translation. But even then, he didn't it was really travel very at all. It was, it was one of those lifeless performances that he put in King George. You know, he mm-hmm. wasn't, wasn't really good. King George is still the intended target for him now. Gold Cup. Maybe I think he can come back and try. Yeah. But Maybe the only the only defence I would give him, lost in translation, was if you've seen his kind of two most impressive performances since he was a novice was in kind of fast run races like last year's Gold Cup and in the Betfield Chase. So again, didn't really didn't really suit him conditions wise. But I'm not I'm not a good defender him. I didn't think he was good at all. I think yeah. Oakland is over wins the King George. I think he could. I think it was a kind of a, a prep run, but it was a hard enough race. You know, I mean, he did try and have a go at Bristol to my on deep ground. And yeah. It might, might, may it bottom, bottom a bit. Not sure. Um, I, as for King George, I, I think Mona Lee might be a good each wee bet against mm-hmm. against the Nichols pair right now. Possibly, yeah. If, if you think somebody bombs out again, 
and Clan de Obo had a bit of a hard race. You know, Mona Lee always comes on for a run. They'll be keen to split him and Manila Indo, so yeah, it may be a bit of value there down the yeah. line. But we've seen in the past as well, Willie Mullins has sent a, a horse over to the King George, do you think? What do you think is going to come over this year? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe Kenboy, actually. Mm-hmm. I could maybe. see maybe Kenboy or Alaho. Yeah, prominent right-handed effort, yeah, perhaps. Mm. But, yeah, Bristol Demai took advantage of the soft ground. A couple to mention from Nace. We'll start off with Notebook. Into 16th one for the champion chase. Again, we, you don't ever doubt his jumping. I would just doubt his, you know, doubt his attitude more than anything. But cashback fell at the first. I thought Fakir do the rear horse. I was really excited about this on Saturday. It was very, very disappointing. But Notebook, again, just... Wins, every, wins everybody you ask him but Cheltenham this was a really bizarre race it was bad I just... this, this was this was really really strange you go into it thinking right Fakir Duderay might want to step up and trip and Notebook is a bang prominent miler so it was Notebook that was held up and won it in the fashion that suggests that he might need to step up and trip yeah. and Fakir Duderay is might need the minimum trip. Um, I like no, I like Notebook, but it's a Cheltenham Festival, fourteen sixty one for a champion chase when he's bombed twice. Yeah. There, okay, he may, he might have had excuses, but I, I, it's a, it's a Cheltenham betting proposition at that price, sixteen to one, and you've got likes of Altium, Shaq and Pierce, why might get there? Uh, I can't have him at that price. Back of the day, I think. I think he had all the allowances as a four-year-old when he was yeah. very forward more than anything else. And I think just other horses have caught him up and he hasn't progressed as much as you would have liked. Mm-hmm. Definitely. We'll touch on the champion chase later in the show. A horse I like, Jandal, won a beginner's chase. I thought it was very, very good. He's into 20 to 1 for the marsh. Again, beat who he had to beat. So, But jumping-wise, I thought it was pretty, pretty good. Uh, he was good, yeah. Uh, he didn't quite stay in Albert Bartlett last year, I don't think. So yeah. I think that the Marsh trip would be a good target for him potentially, but he'll probably bump into Envoy Allen. So, yeah, trouble. Each way value could be there. Sunday, yeah. a few to mention. We'll start off in Cork. Appreciate it, second in last year's bumper. One is Maiden Hurdle. I thought it was pretty comfortable. I thought Paul Townend was sitting on him. I thought Paul Townend was trying to be Bridget Andrews. If you said, did you see that right? I did, yeah. Aye. Good Aye, it's Jamie Spencer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I think what I would take from this race is, obviously it was two miles, but he definitely needs a trip. Ballymore I've heard been mentioned, but potentially uh, it could be a Bartlett horse for me. Yeah, I think he's probably more of a Ballymore horse, in my opinion. You, you, you might have too much class at this stage to run, run him three mile over an Albert Bartlett trip at the moment. Yeah. Uh, he can handle the ground, so it was heavy, but he was, people were kind of saying, oh, he needed every yard to get there and stuff. He was travelling well within him. So yeah, he was jumping, this, jumping this, really well as well. He jumped really well. This horse has more pace than people think it does, I yeah. think. And yeah, that was, it was impressive. He's right, rightfully prominent in both markets, to be honest. And yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good yardstick for the rest to catch. Definitely very, very excited, but appreciate it. A few to mention in Navin. We'll start off with the Monksfield Novice Hurdle. Fakira won it, but the, uh, what I just touched on quickly, Farouk Delane, who a horse we both liked a couple of weeks ago, was a disappointing fourth. Like, what do you think, Tina? What did you take away for this race? Yeah, Farouk Delane was a little bit disappointing. I think he was maybe feeling something from the last time out because he wasn't travelling comfortably at all, I thought. Uh, the second from Joseph O'Brien, fire attack, was probably the one to take out of that race. It was a bit yeah. muddling, but he kind of went on, traded quite short and running, but he was really fresh. He was very keen, and he almost kind of got there to his credit, but he was certainly improved for that run. I'd be surprised if he doesn't uh, emerge as the best of those. Mm-hmm, definitely, but it was... There's not a lot of kind of takeaways you can take away apart from that. Black Bow jumped good in a beginner's chase. Uh, I think he's about 25, 33s for the Ballon, uh, the Mars, sorry. I thought he would jump pretty good. I thought he was okay. Yeah, it was just strange because his hurdling jumping is very erratic, to be honest. Um, I remember when he fell at 2-9, to nine, 
Navin once they had the race at his mercy and just took a reckless gamble at the second last uh, the horse horse that beat him was Captain Guinness in the end who was yeah. 21 at the day so it wasn't that bad a form he's always been highly regarded but he's, he's always been very expensive to follow for punters I think he's always backed into these short prices yeah. he never delivers but uh, yeah he's he needs his own way out in front I think to see the best effect but yeah, he's certainly talented on his day. Very Felix Desji like and kind yeah. of when it all clicks together, he can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last horse to mention in Navin was of course Manel Ando. Easy winner. Got a, basically a solo. It was eight to one before the race, but now it's into sevens. Like I don't know why, but it it basically yeah. it, it didn't it didn't have to beat much. But what I take away from it from Manel Ando is it's just a fantastic jumper. Yeah, he's just all class, isn't he? I mean, he's he's clearly shown that he's 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 improved slightly. He's in good health. He's I was more impressed from at Wexford rather than yeah, than Matt, me too, to be yeah. Honest, but um, yeah, eight, eight to one Cl- clipping him from eights to sevens just seems a little bit uh, trivial from bookmakers, in my opinion. But yeah, he did what he had to do and he did it well. Straight to the saddles. Uh, I think so now, yeah. The plan was a bit up in the air beforehand, but I think the Savile's chase seems to be seems to be the logical target and rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Well, the last horse we'll mention is a horse on Monday who was, I thought it was fairly good, Shishkin. Just... Ah, it wasn't, wasn't bad, was he? It done, yeah, it beat, beat who he had to beat, aye. But joking aside, he was absolutely breathtaking. Like... I don't know if I can ever describe just how excited I get when I see a horse just stand off a fence and just jump it just with such speed. I just It's one of the best things in racing for me. He's an absolute superstar. Just yeah. so, so exciting. Unbelievable performance. Yeah, 10 out of 10, said Nicky Henderson. No wonder. Um, he was very good. Um, everything about him was excellent. It was credit to Nico de Boinville as well because he gave him the, the perfect education around Kempton. He, he went quick when he had to be quick. He was steadied when he had to be steadied. Short, long, even strides. The pace went up when he needed. He responded to that. He did everything right. And for a debut, it was quite impressive. I mean, Mick Passer ran quite credibly, I thought, in second as well. Aye. Still yeah. couldn't quite quite lay a glove on him in the day, but yeah, no, it was a very, very good performance. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of want to just mention how just how good a jumper he was, like how just with these kind of horses, it's difficult to say. Like we we look at horses like Shishkin and Voyalen, and we as soon as the race the their, their first race over fences is finished, we look at the prices for the potential target at, at Cheltenham. He's into seventy four for the Arco. Do you think that is right, or is he too short, or could he be even shorter? Yeah, I think it's a fair price. I mean, I didn't see last week. I didn't really know what would beat him if he transferred his hurdles for him to chase for him. Yeah. He seems to, he seems to have done that. Um, so I think you're kind of backing him to get there more than anything else. I mean, there's always an anti-post risk that at this stage it would be falling to take anything at odds on, something like that. And it can, it can all fall apart quite quickly. Um, but... No, it's encouraging he's going to be campaigned exactly like Altior. The way he kind of relaxes was more Sprinter Sacra like than Altior. Yeah. But he's just still, that's, he's still that's who reminded me of Sprinter Sacra. Just that jump just reminded me of Sprinter Sacra. Yeah, he, he does, but he, he has a turbo kicked in like Altior. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think. Both, I think. Yeah, I think that as well. Very what good. price? Yeah, very good. What price? You tipped up last week the 10 to 1 double for Shishkin and Envoy Alain. Have you checked what it is now? It's about six to one now. Is it? No, always yeah. a always a step ahead, aren't you? Always a step ahead. Sometimes, sometimes. But I But that was our recap for the week. Move on to previewing a race at the festival. This week we're going to have a look at the big race on the Wednesday. We're going to take a look at the Champion Chase. Callum, it's always a, a race that I like. So some fantastic winners over the past few years. We talked earlier about Sprinter Sacra. There's how many can you mention? Sprinter Sacra, masterminded. Who's been your favourite winner? Oh, Sprinter's um, miraculous recovery 
when he won it was uh, from under so was quite something I think. I think that was a really special moment and particularly in the paddock for the Henderson and the Boyneville combination. Yeah, they were probably the best. Definitely. We'll look at the anti post we'll look at the anti post so far. We'll look at Shakan Persoir leads the market at nine to two. Two time champion, Alteo six to one. Last year's Arco winner put the kettle on at eight to one. The defending champion Poetalog at twelve to one and notebook and rouge fifth at fourteen to one and sixteen to one bar. Callum, what do you kind of make of the market? Uh, I think it's probably about right. I don't think there's a lot in behind the top two in terms of class and, and pure ratings. Um, but they didn't get there last year, so I think that's why there's a bit of hesitancy in their price. Yeah, now, Altior's the best rated of them all. He's one pound superior to Jack and Prosoir. But he's now going to be 11. Yeah, I mean, a 10 year olds can win it. 11 year olds, it's a bit harder. Yeah. Uh, especially Tiara was borderline 11 when he won it from the front. So it can be done. Experience does, does tend to kind of come to the fore here. Uh, it's just whether he's as good. The, the sign in the game spirit was quite positive, I thought. Mm-hmm. The last time we saw him, uh, last February, he was quite good there when he won it. Uh, but I think Shaq and Persoir has, has the best form right now. I think his, his win in the Dublin Chase last season was great. when he beat Min by three lengths is yeah. probably the outstanding piece of two-mile form in the last couple of years, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it's whether he gets there, that's the question. He's, yeah. he's had his issues and they've all been kind of wee niggly things. Yeah, four uh, runs in four years. That's, does that worry you? From an anti-post perspective, it has to, but it's, it's it's balanced out by, you look at 92 and you, you look at the rest, you think he's, he's, he's better than these. If he yeah. turns up in song, he's, he's better than these. Like, he's not been around Cheltenham either yet, which is, again would be a slight, slight worry. a slight seed of doubt to you. But if, if you're being on the safe side, you probably wait till he proves his welfare and you can get your non-runner, no bet, kind of back before really lumping on if these prices are still about because I think he's certainly the one to beat for me. Mm-hmm. And me too. I think his performance last year in the Dublin Chase was, was very, very good. I thought he's, he's, I think he's the best jumper in here. I think that always yeah. screams out to me. But with Altior, I just want to kind of ask you as well, we saw last year the, the race he had against Sunnam, like how much, did, how much do you think that took out of him and how difficult is it for him to come back to the form we saw two years ago. Nicky Henderson's always believed that it took a lot out of him and it took a lot out of um, surname as well. Yeah. As we saw in the Ken Wars where he bombed out. Um, I, th- I think it's just this idea of stepping up and trip probably should have been done before, stayed after. It's yeah. been, he's, he's a bang out two miler now. Mm-hmm. He, he shapes like he could get further. It, it was an experiment worth having. It didn't quite work. Um, but he, he just... He always seems to hit a flat spot and then the turbo kicks in and then he wins. He did it in the Arkle. Uh, he did it in his uh, second win as well when he looked a bit in trouble. Scuro Royal jumped past him in the last yeah. when he won the champion chase. So he just, he just, that hill just, it just plays into his hands so, so much. Definitely. We'll move on to put, put the kettle on at 8-1 last year's Arkle winner. We spoke about put the kettle on last week. Like, is two miles a trip, do we think, or is she, she crying out for further? I think she needs further, and, and, and you've got that male's chase in your pocket as well, which makes it eight to one on offer a bit more unappealing. Yeah. I, I think she'll probably still head here, uh, but she's officially rated 155. She, it was unmoved after her show of chase win, so that's a long way off Alti on Shaq and Poussois at 171, 172. So her form just overall doesn't quite stack up. The Arco form last year is not the most convincing in the world no. yet, I would think. So she needs to step up, but say what she is a huge, huge fighter. She 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 will try and try and try. Yeah. And, and if, if you if you if you think you've got doubts over the last two, you think Altior too old, Shaq and Pursoir can't back him, you might not get there. She has an obvious alternative in, yeah. in our Cheltenham record. She just wins, so mm-hmm. she'll need to step up, but it's not impossible. She's only seven as well. Yeah, definitely. Last year's champion, Palatologues, at 12-1. to 1. 
if you'd said to me last, if you'd said to me a week before last year's race that who was going to win the race, I think Paulette Log would have been nowhere near my mind. But took advantage of the fact that two of the two of the horses, two of the big three, were non-runners and Defy De Soy bombed out. But I think Paulette Log would need to be severely, severely unchallenged at the front to to repeat his success last year. Yeah, and Defy De Soy didn't fire. Paulette Log was the second highest rated horse in the yes. race. And he was the obvious horse to pick up the pieces. It was just his Tingle Creek run beforehand was absolutely shocking. Yeah. It, it would put it would put anyone off. So you, you look at Paulette Log in two ways, you think, well, he's rated 169, he's a defending champion. He shouldn't be 12 to 1. That's too big. But you, you read out the sentence, Paulette Log is back to back Queen Mother champion chase winner. You just don't believe it. It's just no. it's something it's something that you it's quite quite hard for the average punter, I think, to get their head round. Mm-hmm. Because he's been he's been hammered by Altior, he's yeah. been hammered by men in the class, he's been hammered by Defy the Soy twice, some names beat him by twenty lengths as well at one mm-hmm. point. He does have his day in the sun when he had it had the injury when he beat Mim. So it's, it's possible he could pull one out, but you think that, that day has been it was last he's year. Gone, yeah. And he's had it, so yeah. definitely two at fourteen to one. Notebook we've mentioned already. Again, Cheltenham record would kind of worry me, but one I kind of quite like at fourteen to one. I think his price is pretty good. Rouge Vif. third in last year's Arco. He's come out and won a very very good handicap since. So it could be it could be pretty high. It could be pretty high priced at fourteen to one. I think he could be my each way alternative to Shaq and Yeah, it's fair enough. It's he's progressive enough to do it. Um, I'm I'm just wondering they they water it quite often in the opening day. Yeah, it's good ground to be seen mm-hmm. the best effect. Yeah, that's that's a concern that I've got for him. Uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's certainly got a squeak. You know, he's one of these kind of interesting progressive horses in behind that again could pick up the pieces if the big guns don't quite get there. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think though that like, it's very difficult to look outside the the kind of sixteen to one bracket. But I've just got a couple to mention. A horse I liked a couple of years ago that was went, it was favourite for the Arkle, trained by Joseph O'Brien. Do you, do you remember him? Hey, Le Richburg. Le Richburg. 25 to 1. Again, what you're kind of gambling on here is will he get back to fitness? But mm-hmm. if he does, I think it could be it could be very, very good at that price. Another one I want to mention is Esprit de Large at 50 to 1. Now, again, fell his last two runs. But good traveller apart from that. I think if he stays in his feet, he could be very, very high at 50s. Is there anything kind of, for you, you kind of want to mention outside the... Yeah, I'll, I'll take another two uh, that are a wee bit forgotten as well. From last year's grand annual, actually. Uh, Grenatine. Grenatine, yeah. 16, 20 to 1 would potentially be interesting. He's kind of progressed. He was fourth in the grand annual. He was a bit unlucky. He's progressed in at a rate of 158 as well. One well at Exeter in the old Halden Cup. He'll go to the Tingle Creek, Paul Nichols, yeah. young chaser, progressive, knows what it takes to win this race. Um, it might be a year too soon from overall from that company, but the Tingle Creek will find out more. And but I think if you take, I think the connections expect a big run there. Mm-hmm. And if Altior doesn't fire, he can, he can win this race. And he'll, after that, if he wins the Tingle Creek, he will not be twenty to one for the champion chase. That's for no. sure. Uh, the other one's the winner of that race and chosen mate of Gordon Elliott. Yeah. Uh, if, if you look at the fourth, you think the winner who was well backed into 72 favourite had tons up his sleeve mm-hmm. for marker 147. He needs to be considered as well. He's, he's up to similar mark. He's now 156. He's now two pound less than Grenatine, who might be more progressive than him, but he certainly enters the conversation. He's 33 to 1 for it. Um, he's rated so highly now that I don't think there's many other options for him at two miles and tackles. He won, he won races, so it'll be interesting to see him back over fences this season. Mm-hmm, definitely. What the what the, the viewers want to know, Callum, is what what stats shall we shall we be following for this race and how to pick, pick the winner? Yeah, uh, the big stat is that it's Willie Mullins' big massive hoodoo race and probably yeah. the only thing in planet Earth that he hasn't won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's been, He's been beaten by, he's had some brilliant horses in this, have been beaten you know, recently, Min, Duvan and Undersoul. Duvan, the last two, Duvan. The last, Duvan get beat at 2-9 in this. Um, 
once upon a time for the couple of cracks at it we do van and under so and somehow been beaten. Yeah. And Undersoul's won a Undersoul won a Ryan Air instead. So he's in class. Min just kept bumping into Alty off. Yeah. Which is unfortunate for his own good. Um there's only been two winning favourites in the last six years. And a lot of them have been turned over odds on. Mm-hmm. And both winning favourites have been Altior. Yeah. So it's one of these races that you have to be wary of with punters. You know, there's a lot of kind of hard luck stories in it for favourites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicky Henderson, Nicky Henderson has trained five of the last nine winners. I mean, he's in the five of the last nine renewals all going to Henderson. Mm-hmm. Altios went sacked in Finian's Rainbow. Yeah, remember him. <laughs> we, I mean, Finian's Rainbow is 2012, which seems a long, long time ago. I know, it does, right. Nico, Nico de Boinville's in the winner three of the last five, obviously, with his association with Henderson, can I say yeah. that? Uh, 15 of the last 18 winners have been rated 164 or higher, officially. So that would rule out, put the kettle on, notebook, grenadine, everyone outside, the, everyone apart from Politologue, Rouge Vif, which is 164, Altior and Shaq and Pursois. So official ratings, Right now, only four kind of make the grades yeah. that are prominent in the market enough. Uh, nine-year-olds have won four of the last ten as well. So even, no, know that it's kind of been younger the better recently, but in, in this race, you do need a touch of classes. There's been two ten-year-olds that have won it as well in the past yeah. uh, seven or eight years. So, yeah, you do need a bit of experience. Mm-hmm. So the stats are amazing as always, but can I just ask you to predict the winner this far out? Uh, Shaq and Persoir, I think. I'm going to match up with that. I'm going to go for Shaq and Persoir. And that was our look at the champion chase. This week, and as always, we're back to being very, very busy this weekend. We've got a, another grade one in England. We're going to have the, the fighting fifth hurdle with Newcastle on Saturday. Epitons 4-7, to seven, the defending champion hurdle winner. She's just going to go in one, isn't she? Uh, yes, yeah, she should, but this isn't the penalty kick that most people seem to think it is, in my opinion. I think there's a couple of interesting race fit rivals here. Um, most notably, Silver Streak, who looks set to get his ground as well. It's quite good. Yeah. He's rated 158, Epitont 162. The seven pounds, again, makes a massive difference, of course, but she will need to be quite forward to to win this as easily as the market expects. There's a bit of weakness in it as well. I mean, you can get four to six. So I think people are looking to take her on in some places. Uh, there's a lot of interest against her. Um, Scoo Royal being there, again, yeah, he's, he's going to get his ground, it seems. It's, I think it's going to be quite dry up north. It's mm-hmm. already good to soft. Um, Epitaph obviously won't mind the ground. She's certainly the, well, the, the proven class angle of it. But I wouldn't, wouldn't be rushing in. The North as well, two interesting mm-hmm. horses. And the Connors and Ladd won it last year. It wasn't, yeah, certainly sure. wasn't a flip from the front. Yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll bow along and it'll put your job under pressure. So you can't really afford to be rusty as Bouvier there was when he was mm-hmm. going to get found out when he had that very freak injury. Uh, yeah, was... a, a, a bit of hurdle sticking out of his leg. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, a, it was a weird one. Uh, Rebel Valley as well. I quite like Rebel Valley, yeah. Nicky this is a horse that I've seen twice in the flesh in air. It seems a long time ago in his bumper days, but he's been very good in both occasions. You know, it's not a lot of horses in air, but he's, he's make, he was making all in his debut, and the runner-up came to press and was travelling far better. Looked like he was going to wish past. And then... A turbo kicked in. He absolutely scooted clear of six lengths down the street. You know, a lot of people were kind of on their heads going, what would you see here at air? Um, Nicky Richards and Brian Hughes, who have a 45% record there at air so for bumper runners, so it, it was yeah. no surprise. And then he was back the following month, like the last January, I think, and he was there. He was back 25 to 6, and he was even more impressive. He travelled far, far smoothly. He was... He, he was certainly not as green as before, so he's got a lot of experience and think we think a lot of them up north as well. So I mean, they're going to be race fit and they're going to be up for this. And it's yeah. I don't think it's a plain penalty kick. I think it's a rather watch and see race. Maybe Rebel Valley eights. Yeah, I would, I would. I would be keen to 
dip in the Ribble Valley about 8-1 to one each way, but I fully expect Epiton to win. I just think she's the... The seven pounds is a massive as well. I don't. I think there was some kind of mentioned all day, but the seven pounds been a a bit unfair. I think it probably is. Yeah, but if she if she's up to her, if she's up to her former last year's champion hurdle, she'll win. So I would be pretty confident with Epiton. Friday we've got an exciting race. I would say this is one of the races of the weekend in Newbury. The long distance hurdle. We'll see the stairs division come into full effect, and we've got some tremendous horses lining up here if they all turn up. Paisley Park, the hopefully she's hopefully he's back to his best. We've got McFabulous, Somerville Boy, Time Hill, and last year's Stairs Huddle winner, Lesnigar Oscar. This looks a cracking race, Carl. Yeah, there's so many angles to it, isn't there? There's five top notches kind of uh, all going to battle. Um, all, all with kind of slightly different profiles as well. Yeah. Uh, you've got Paisley Park, the kind of king of the division that has to has to kind of prove himself a little bit after what happened last year. And, uh, the figulating heart of the Steers hurdle when he was all John. Yeah. That's that's excusable that happens. And yeah. Maybe 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 we'll come back. Let's say Oscar won that race. His reappearance wasn't that good. Um but if if it turns into a big massive stamina test, he, he might be the one at a price is that that'll appreciate it more. You've got Time Hill bringing Albert Bartlett for him into it. And then you've got McFabulous who seems to be the up and comer trying yeah. at this level. And at this early stage of the one for the money at the minute that he still needs to prove that he can see out a, a strong, stiff three miles yet. Uh, and then there's the other one of, of the five that I'm trying to find here. Summer, Summer Boy, Boy, which I'm not sure he wants that massive test at three miles yeah. quite yet. I think he's more of a two and a half miler mm-hmm. for me. But no, it's going to be a fascinating race. I think you yeah. can make a case for any five of them. I think it's going to be a very, very good race. I think if Paisley Park's fat, I think he's very, very hard to beat. But... Mm-hmm. Time Hill as well. Time Hill was very, very unlucky in last year's Albert Bartlett. Just didn't get the racing room he needed. But again, I'm a big, big fan of him. And McFabulous as well. I think McFabulous is the up-and-coming horse. If I had to press you for a winner, who would it be? Um, I'd probably just side with Leslie Gar Oscar each way. I don't think it should be that much outside the five. There was, there was enough promise in his reappearance run mm-hmm. to suggest that he, he just needed it and he could possibly come on for it but yeah no it's it's open race so it'll probably just leave it on the day for for a bet anyway yeah i think i'm gonna i'm gonna save i'm i'm, I'm torn between mcfabulous and time hill two of my favorite horses and now but i'm gonna mm. i'm gonna hold sit in the fence until friday when we see it saturday as well we've got the ladbrooks trophy i wouldn't say this is the best renewal of the of the race we've ever seen but you've got a big big fancy here yeah killed the sat i've been all over him for quite some time for this thing. He had a lovely pipe opener over hurdles at Weatherby and behind Roxanne and ne- Next Destination. It's a really good form, I think. He, he wasn't overly asked in the day either. He still wasn't beaten horrendously far. Uh, he was very unlucky in the Ultima. He was shot at, just beaten narrowly by the conditional who will face again on slightly better terms. I think it's three pounds. Mm-hmm. Ben Pollen's horses last year just weren't quite right. Kill the Sart seemed to defy that a little bit. Um, th- this year, I think he's been absolutely laid out for this. There's, there's no doubt, and I'll be, I'll be very disappointed if he doesn't hit the frame. I got about a twenty to one the, the week after. That's good. The week after he sold those, he's now, he's now vying for favouritism with three or four really decent looking horses. So Shane top of the game isn't there. Yeah. He, he would, have, he would have brought the kind of weight carrying class angle to things that this race kind of misses. But I think it's still a good enough race for its mm-hmm. type. But yeah, it killed the start for me. I think I'm going to side with you there. I think killed us as well. We'll move on to the Jerry Field in the race that Epiton won last year. The handicap, I've got a big, big fancy in here, and I'm going to go for a horse of Nicky Henderson's again. Marie's Rock at 6 to 4. She's running off a mark of, I think it's 1 4 1, which I think is four pounds higher than Epiton ran, it in, ran in it last year. But she's a very, very progressive mare. I think she's very, very exciting. I think she's very well handicapped, and I think she's going to win comfortably. Yeah, I think she should. I think I mean, uh, she. I think she was rated kind of slightly higher than Floresa before she she had a week and a setback. Uh, yeah. The years and all this is last year. Um, yeah, she should win this. All being all being well, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that as well. And um, we've got a very very exciting card in Fairy House on Sunday. We've got three Grade Ones. The Royal Bond Novices Hurdle, the race that Envoy Allen won last year. We're going to see 
hopefully, Bally Adam, she wears it well, and Concertista all line up here. I'm very, very excited with this race, and I cannot split the three, but I've got a wee, I've got a wee inkling towards one, but I'll give you a wee stab at it with Jenka this race. Yeah, it's been a good race. It's been formative for the future, isn't it? Uh, always is. Um, I think in goal is a bit forgotten about twenty twenty. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. This. I think if if the market principles go a bit too quick and a bit too fast, too soon, a bit hard, get racing early on. He's a fluent jumper and he'll stay a bit further. Uh, he's twenty to one, which he doesn't have that much to find against the likes of Marley Adam, and she wears it well. Concertista's taken advantage of her last novice run. Mm-hmm. Um, she gets a chance and she, she'll she get weight as well like she wears it well does so you'd probably be looking to take Bally Adam on in this yeah I think I I, I quite I like she wears it well I think she's she was very very good the first day I, I think it was Tipperary she ran in she was very very good yeah she's she's very very progressive I think as well she's about 5-1 to one for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle if she wins this on Sunday I don't think she's going to be that I think she's going to be a lot lot shorter so Mm-hmm. I'm going to go for she wears it well here, although Concertista as well, very, very good one of the novice hurdle last year. Has that kind of, has that turn of foot that I don't think many horses in this race have, but I'm going to go for she wears it well. I think she wears it well is good, but Bally Adam again, Bally Adam could be so much could better be than all of these, and she could be so much better than all of these, but it's a very, very fascinating race. Yeah. The other second grade one is the Drinmore Novices Chase. We saw Fakir Duderi win this last year after Sam Pro fell at the last fence, but we are going to see the best horse in training in Royal N in this. Is he going to go and win comfortably? Uh, yeah, and we easy work behind him again. I think it'll be the Ballamore 1 2. It's got to be the same man to defend as well, yeah. He has an entry, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't really like him under pressure that much so nah. I expect I expect easy work to chase home in Boy Allen um, yeah um, he might be the best horse in training but maybe Shishkin might have something to say about that uh, probably never see the two of them meet but yeah in Boy Allen I think he's 23 and he probably should win uh, easy work's good enough to get close he will certainly be asked more questions under pressure than he did in his chase debut so it'll be interesting to see how he handles that do you want to laugh? go on I was in the shop the other day and an old guy came up to me and said, Listen, I've been watching your videos about Cheltenham and I really, really enjoy them, but he's, he's are too much into Envoy Elaine. I think he's overrated. So just for this, I thought, let's, let's have a look at Envoy Elaine. I think <laughs> Envoy Elaine's the, the, the best horse we've seen in the last 10 years. And I'm going to just explain why. If you look at his form and every race he's running, apart from his two races at Cheltenham, these are some of the horses that he's beat. And I'm just going to make, I've got a wee note of them here. Go on. He beat Envoy Ale- uh, he beat Appreciate It in his bumper. Mm-hmm. Although I've got it here somewhere. Jason the Militant in his first in his first bumper race. Mm-hmm. Midnight Run. Run Wild Fred. Embittered Beacon Edge. Mount Leinster. Then when it went over fences, he beat Front View and Tukis. Mm-hmm. Abacadabra's Darver Star. Alex, mm-hmm. Alexia Dene, and then when he won his maiden, his beginner's chase, he beat January Jets. And that's not including his runs, his two runs at Cheltenham, where he won the champion bumper and the Ballymore. So how many yeah. horses in the past 10 years will have, beat, will have beat as many possibly potential 150 horses in that, in that fashion? No, not many, and not not many over different disciplines either. I don't think, because he's just born to be a born to be a chaser as well. Um, the Ballymore form the way as well is working out quickly. And the big breakaways came out and franked it. Yeah, easy work. I think still looks second best in this division to Envoy Al quite comfortably in my opinion. Um, the third, the third, the big getaway also looks yeah. pretty decent. I think I think uh, him and Monkfish have got an entry on Saturday. Is that right? Yeah, they do. Both of them do, yeah. It'll be interesting to see them. But yeah, Envoy Allen, I can understand where the man in the shop is coming from uh, because well, over, fen- over fences anyway, you can see where he's coming from. Yeah, I just think um, I, I, can't, I can't see Envoy Allen being beat on Sunday. And I just don't think we've seen a horse that's just that that's exciting since I would say probably Sprinter Saka when he went novice chasing, I would say is the most, this, 
that's I've been the most excited with that horse, but it's just it's just a super it's just a superstar. And I don't want to make that the envoy of envoy Alain show, but we're going to touch on another horse. I'm going to make it into her show in oh, a yeah. second. But uh, it's just everything about him just screams to me like he's a superstar. And those those horses he's beat are they're they're all they're all very very good horses that he's beat and beat them well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I beat them quite convincingly. I know different tactics as well from the front. Quite held up in the ball more got there, ate, ate up a lot of ground. Yeah. Quicker than most people think as well. I mean, two mile, two and a half mile, probably up to three miles sooner rather than later as well. Yeah, he's, he's a formidable opponent for anyone at the minute. Yeah, he's definitely fast. Maybe he's, yeah, very good. Very good toss. But the final, the final race on Sunday, the final grade one is the Hatton's Grace Hurdle where we are going to see the return of the queen of the National Hunt game, Honeysuckle, which is back. I, I am very, very excited to see her return. Now, she won this very, very well last year. And I think mm-hmm. she's going to do the same this year. I don't think the opponents are as hard as they were last year. So I think she's very, very rock solid. I think she's about four to six, which is rock solid. Yeah, I would rather back Honeysuckle at 46 and Epitone at 46 this week. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Too. I, definitely. Think, I think out of the shorties, I think she's she's the most solid bet of the lot. Um, her opposition, I think Saturday want prefers two mile. I think a couple of them prefer three mile. I think she's the the nailed on intermediate horse. Mm-hmm. Getting that seven pound as well gives her the, the clear class edge as well off these. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, definitely one to beat. And to the extent her winning sequence to I think it's eleven now. I believe yeah, she's she's certainly been the most one of the best horses we've seen in the last couple of years. But that is your look at what's coming up this weekend. And we will move on to our anti-post picks for week four of this series. Now, I will just have a recap on who we've picked so far. Callum has went for Cobbler's Way at 33-1 for the RSA Chase. Flying Scotsman at 40-1 for the Triumph Hurdle. The double that looks rock solid now, Shishkin and Envoy Allen at 10-1 for the Arco and Marsh. And Holy Macapone at 20-1 for the Albert Bartlett. I'll move on to my four. I've already picked Bob Ollinger to win any race at the Cheltenham Festival at 16 to 1. I still think that's very good. Honeysuckle, the horse we've just spoke about, 3 to 1 to win any race. Galvin at 6 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase. And Bright Forecast at 25 to 1 to win any race at Cheltenham. Bright Forecast, I want to just touch on quickly. I heard a, a viewer comment the other day that he perhaps has been retired. Now, I've not heard any news to suggest that, but if it has, then. Oh, well. Didn't know that when I, post betting, if didn't know that true, when I yeah, picked him, but yeah, uh, it, it might be. Yeah, yeah, that, that happens, I would, yeah. I would, wouldn't be surprised. I think he's been very, very unlucky with injuries. But we'll move on to our picks for this week. Callum, we'll start off. You've got one. Who have we got? Uh, it's Castro Vitera in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Yep. Uh, she's twenty-five to one. She she won a listed uh, bumper quite well at Navin, giving weight all round. She made all the runner-up came to challenge. She went clear again. She won by three and a half four lengths, extending at the line, which is always a good thing to see. You know, a horse hitting the line quite well. Um, it's encouraging. She, she's she's bright. She's a, she's only five, but she has a bit of experience under her belt. And this is a horse that I think might be going places. She's quite a striking, striking individual to look at. Imposing, strong. Will certainly make a hurdler in time. And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, she was very very impressive. Joseph O'Brien said. Joseph O'Brien said, um, we hope she's a graded novice hurdler and we hope that she'll be developing into a mayor who would have a chance in the mayor's novices hurdle at Cheltenham. So there's a long-term target in mind. We know Willie Mullins will have plenty of horses to take to war in this race. It's a race that he's made his own recently. But I just think in these novice races, if you can find a 25 to 1 shot or something like that, it does generate interest for you monitor markets in the future as well. Daughter of Jeremy, brilliant Arco bloodline, so she yeah. be a raw two miler. Mm-hmm. Well, you went for something at twenty five to one for this race and I'm gonna I'm gonna go for something in this race as well, but I'm not gonna go as high. I like your pick. I thought she was very, very good at the weekend in a, a bumper, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna stick I'm gonna go a bit higher on the market. I'm gonna get she wears it well in before she goes short on when she wins on Sunday. She's five to one. 
Now, she's second favourite. Do you know who the favourite is for this race? Guess who the favourite is. Yeah, I, I thought she'd be a favourite. Princess Zoe's sitting at four to one. She's yeah, not going to go over. The flat. Yeah, she's not going to go over hurdles, is she? Yeah, I don't think so. Nah, I don't either. One of the stories of the flat season, right enough, but yeah, I don't think she's going to go over hurdles. But she wears it well. I think it's very, very progressive. I think she's she's got a very, very good chance in this Sunday's Royal Bond. And we spoke about the man Willie Mullins. Five, there's been five renewals of this race. Willie's won all five of them. So I yeah. would say, with three with three very very good favourites as well, and Lemony, Let's Dance, and Lorena. So he has a good record with favourites in this race, and I think he's going to do the same this year. I'm very I'm very very sweet on she wears it well at five to one. Bit short just now, but I'm just thinking as well if she wins the Royal Bond, she's going to be very very short. Come the week after so I think I'm going to get her in now while while it's still there yeah if she wins the Royal Bond she could go to the Supreme if she wanted to possibly possibly and there's, quotes, there's quotes of 25 33 to 1 for that but yeah you're right I mean, she but we know we know Valley Mullins we know Valley Mullins is going to send her to the horse the race she's got the best chance in and this would be the race I would imagine yeah definitely it's mm-hmm. more, more likely than not so that was our anti-post picks for the week that is us for this week I can't thank Callum enough again for coming on yeah pleasure as always Scott pleasure as always and we are going to be all we're going to be all over our SM media account over the weekend giving us giving our tips for the weekend and I'm very very excited to announce we'll be back again next week with a look at what's coming up the week after and we'll recap the races we've just mentioned Thanks very much, everyone, and we'll see you next week.